Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss inter-process communication in operating system. Whenever we talk about process in operating system, there are two types of processes exist. The first one is known as independent process. A process is independent if it cannot affect or gets affected by the other processes which are executing in the system. Such a process is known as independent process because it is not going to affect any other process and it is not getting affected from any other process in this case. The second type of process is known as cooperating process. A process is cooperating if it can affect or gets affected by other processes executing in the system over here. Whenever we have a cooperating processes uh, in a system, uh, we need to establish some inter-process communication strategy so that they can share the information over here. So there are mainly two kind of uh, inter-process communication exist in operating system. One is known as shared memory system. Another one is known as message passing system. We will try to understand each of these particular methods uh, in detail one by one. The first one is known as shared memory system. In this case, a region of a shared memory is created within the address space of the process which needs to communicate. For example, in this case, uh, let us say that process A and process B wants to share some information. So first we need to create what is that called as the shared memory here. And whenever A wants to send some information, that will be placed into this particular shared region. And whenever the information is available on shared region, that will be read by this particular B so that A and B can communicate with one another in this particular case here. So this is a simple strategy what we can follow that is known as shared memory system over here. But one very important thing we need to remember when it comes to shared memory system is whenever we don't have a space into this particular shared memory, the process A has to wait because there is no space onto this particular shared memory. And if you don't have any message on this particular shared memory, the process B cannot read that particular thing. So at a particular point of time, either process A can use this particular shared memory or process B can use this particular shared memory, not uh, A and B at the same time over here. Coming back to the second type of inter-process communication that is known as message passing system. Again, in this case, uh, process A and B wants to communicate with uh, one another. So what they do over here is uh, uh, they will uh, send that particular information to this particular kernel. From that particular kernel, again, the particular message will be delivered to the destination over here. So this is how actually the inter-process communication takes place in message passing system. And whenever you want to implement a message passing system in operating system, we need to have at least two operations. One is known as send message and second one is known as receive message over here. The size of this particular message may be fixed or variable. There is no question in this particular case. If process P and Q wants to communicate with another, uh, either of those particular processes should send a message and another one should receive the messages over here or the communication link uh, between those two processes here. Now, uh, there are some different uh, types of message passing system exist in operating system. One is known as direct or indirect communication. Second one is known as synchronous or asynchronous communication. And the third one is known as automatic or explicit buffering in this particular case. Now we will try to understand each of these body things one by one. The first one is direct communication. In direct communication, uh, each process that wants to communicate must explicitly name the recipient or the sender over here. For example, uh, the send and receive will look something like this here. Send P comma message, receive Q comma message here. What is the meaning of this one? The meaning of this one is a particular process which has executed this particular statement is trying to send a message to process P here. That is what the meaning of this particular statement. So what is the meaning of this one? The process which has executed this particular statement that is receive Q comma message. The meaning of this one is the process is waiting for some message from Q here. So that is what the meaning of uh, send and receive in this particular case. In indirect communication, the messages are sent and received using something called as mailboxes or the ports over here. So each mailbox has a unique identification number. In POSIX, we use integer numbers to identify those particular mailboxes over here. The two processes can communicate only if the processes have the shared mailbox. For example, uh, we have created one mailbox here. A and B can communicate with one another or can say that the two processes A and B can communicate with one another if they have the shared mailbox in this particular case. 
so now how uh, send and receive will look like in uh, uh, indirect communication is uh, the send will look something like this send a comma message the meaning of this one is send a particular message to this particular mailbox a here and uh, receive a comma message means the process is going to receive a message from this particular mailbox a in this particular case now coming back to the next one there is something called as a synchronization or you can say that synchronous or asynchronous message passing the synchronous and asynchronous message passing is also known as blocking or non blocking message passing over here now what is blocking there are two kind of things can exist blocking send and blocking receive over here in blocking send whenever a particular process has sent some message it will block itself until that particular message is received by the receiver in this case or that particular message has been put into this particular mailbox so that is what is called as blocking send in this case what is non blocking send whenever a particular process sends a message to another process it will not block itself or it will not wait for that particular message to be delivered it will continue its work without waiting here so that is what is called as non blocking send in this particular case coming back to the third one that is known as blocking receive the receiver is waiting for some message and if that particular message is not available in mailbox then it has to wait here so that is what is called as a blocking receive in this particular case it is not doing any other work it is waiting for we can say that uh, the message to be received over here the last one is something called as non blocking receive a particular process has made a request for a message if it is available it will be delivered well in advance if it is not available that particular process will not be blocked over here uh, that the remaining process or you can say remaining task will be continued by that particular process over here the last part of our discussion is something known as buffering in message passing system so whenever uh, we establish a communication channel from you can say that one process to other process either in direct or indirect uh, mode what actually happens over here is uh, Uh, the the message which is been sent by the sender has to be stored into something called as a temporary queue once that particular message is available in temporary queue the receiver can receive that particular message here basically that particular buffer can be implemented in three different ways the first one is known as zero capacity the queue has the maximum length of zero that is nothing but whenever a particular process has sent some information there is no space to store it immediately that has to be delivered to the receiver in this particular case second one is known as bounded capacity the meaning of this one is uh, the shared memory whatever you we have or you can say that the queue it is having some finite length n in this particular case if the queue is not full then the new message can be sent by the sender if it is full it has to you can say that wait for some time so that some uh, space is available on that particular queue over here the last one is something known as unbounded capacity here the queue's length is potentially infinite in this particular case we don't have any limit on that particular queue length it is uh, potentially infinite or you can say that countably infinite over here thus any number of messages can be uh, sent into that particular uh, queue and then they can wait for the receiver to receive those particular messages over here so in this video i have discussed what is inter process communication i hope the concept is clear if you like the video do like and share with your friends Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.